just 15 minutes to, to try and cover a couple of notions. Uh, thank you uh, to all those who stayed, uh, who turned up and accepted uh, to um, take part in uh, this uh, convention uh, with, uh, you know, given the difficult uh, conditions. Thank you for our sponsors. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, sorry, uh, who supported us. Thank you to the organizers. Uh, thank you to the faculties. Thank you to our foreign uh, friends and our French friends who uh, came their fears and turned up anyway. So uh, this is about toxicity management and uh, early global care, what we're going to do in the future. You know uh, these, this slide quite well. What are we going to do? Uh, this is support care, care, palliative care, and cancer therapy all together. And we have uh, to agree that diagnosis uh, to any for, uh, sorry, diagnosis of any uh, cancer uh, has uh, to take into account uh, survival and life after treatment and people who might have uh, problems uh, in terms of um, rehab or getting used to normal life again. Uh, so we have these uh, treatments, uh, Poplar, with a new immunotherapy uh, as uh, another uh, line of uh, treatment. Uh, this is uh, quite uh, an interesting uh, study uh, because it introduces a new uh, treatment, the anti-LPDL1. We heard uh, uh, about it uh, earlier on and yesterday with uh, also the use of uh, docetaxel and the and antezolizumab. Uh, these data are extremely interesting in terms of survival. Uh, these uh, patients are having uh, another round of uh, treatment after many, and benefits are uh, clear with a vision of the future uh, for these patients who are at the ultimate stage of their disease. We are speaking of a year uh, survival. Now, in terms of um, adverse effects, uh, you've seen that in the slides of uh, Benjamin Bess, we have a certain number of adverse effects that are um, relatively tolerable um, in uh, some therapies, but uh, not that tolerable in uh, other uh, therapies. Here we have 4% of uh, um, uh, high uh, toxicity therapies, uh, depending on uh, the arm. So the uh, question is, how uh, do you support the patient so that he can or she can benefit from this treatment? The question we've been asking throughout this t seventh uh, TAO uh, on uh, tox uh, cancer uh, toxicity management is these uh, toxicity, these intolerances, and how you manage them. But we have to have a look at uh, the docetaxel uh, arm here with uh, treatment-related grade three and four uh, toxicities is absolutely unacceptable, which means we cannot uh, deal with patients with uh, some uh, specific growth factor. We've seen this uh, also in the Richard Graller uh, presentation. Follow-up can improve uh, the level of efficiency, the level of efficiency of support treatment, uh, that is uh, improving the efficiency of specific treatment and improving survival. Uh, the uh, innovative associations, well, immunotherapy, once again mentioned, this is uh, very much uh, the future. And this study of, for a melanoma was already introduced during the Congress. We have one arm uh, <coughs> for uh, epilimumab, one for uh, nivolumab. And what's happening, we've got uh, extraordinary uh, outcomes in terms of efficiency. This is really the progress of uh, cancer uh, expertise. And you see that uh, in terms of uh, uh, survival without progression, we uh, moved from nine months, which was already good, uh, to uh, uh, nearly 
a whole year for uh, patients who uh, had almost no hope. And what is the development of a, a great three and four? We have five, uh, 55%, uh, which means we still have some work to do, and we still have a lot of time to learn to tame these molecules, so to try and find a new uh, care methods, new management uh, uh, methods, targeted therapies, uh, okay, they're well controlled, they are well tolerated, uh, that's what we thought, uh, We, but we found new uh, toxicities, uh, the same as for immunotherapies, we discover human uh, dimensions that we're going to have to apprehend. Uh, this is typical, this notion of multidisciplinary uh, work, that is, uh, we're going to have uh, to work even more with our colleagues from uh, paramedical background, medical background, pneumologists uh, or others that uh, we are going to have to work all together. This is the objective of uh, supportive uh, care. Now, assessing uh, tolerance, uh, this is a major issue, this new apprehension with a, a patient reported outcome, it's going to enable us to uh, assess things even better. Uh, we have to adapt to the patients, it's not for our patients to adapt to our language, we have to adapt to them in a way that uh, we can hear that toxicities are important uh, in the long run. And uh, at the ASCO Congress, uh, we had this uh, trial which enabled us to compare the survival of uh, patients having pediatric cancer of a uh, time in the 70s, uh, the mortalities, mortality level was much higher than in the 90s. The reason is that we adapted um, chemo chemotherapy uh, doses, uh, radiotherapy, keeping uh, efficient uh, treatments, uh, developing efficient treatments in this uh, therapeutic uh, progress, uh, for instance, in immuno therapy, but the fact that we're also properly managing the uh, toxicities of the treatment, so all this is going, all this together is going to enable us to have better survival for our patients. Now, impact of pain on overall survival in metastatic cancer patients uh, treated with chemotherapy. Uh, this was about uh, uh, assessing whether a patient feeling great pain uh, had a better um, survival chances? The answer is yes. It's quite simple to understand, which means uh, that uh, uh, the patient with greater pain has a more developed uh, disease. Uh, but when you look at these curves, you see the changes depending on the level of plain, pain at the beginning of uh, care, and then as care uh, unfolds. Uh, so you see uh, the worse uh, uh, survival probability in blue here. A patient with no uh, pain when uh, cared for has this curve. A patient who used to have pain and has no more pain at the end of the care process uh, with a uh, uh, course of treatment that was not only efficient but also supportive treatment that acted on the pain, the survival uh, uh, curve uh, you see is almost at the same level as the non-pain uh, patient. Uh, so, but this has to uh, go uh, together. And then there's uh, the organizational uh, side of things. Many uh, suggestions have been made. Uh, each center is making a suggestion. Our is to really move from this uh, uh, precision medicine, as this is the uh, wording of uh, the uh, the um, Physicians uh, Academy, both in the United States and here, uh, to move from that to uh, personalized medicine that is taking into account anything that's part of the environment of uh, the uh, patient. Then apprehend what's happening outside, at home, link up um, the city, the, the professional uh, environment. Uh, this is the role not only of the doctor, but also of nurses who are going to play a role in terms of coordination, the physician who's going to have uh, to uh, monitor uh, people 
all um, health uh, players uh, in towns, in hospitals who are going to have to share information. You should have uh, uh, each and everyone working um, on his own, but uh, come together, work together so that follow up be leaner and that there is no stumbling block. This is what we've been uh, trying uh, to develop, to uh, have early reaction, uh, to anticipate a deterioration so that uh, the patient uh, it doesn't um, go uh, often to uh, A&E, &E, sorry. Uh, inside uh, information, uh, sorry, information inside the hospital, information from outside the hospital uh, be linked together uh, to enable uh, better uh, care. And this is going to be made possible through uh, questionnaire sharing. Uh, there should be no more uh, hindrances to this uh, cooperation. Education is also important, not only educating the patient, but also uh, health professionals and uh, everybody so that uh, uh, at ambulatory stage we can m link uh, together hospital and home environment so that we have a better survival chance, chance and that we move to a patient-centered uh, care, which was a central uh, point uh, um, in the ASCO convention. Now to conclude, uh, this uh, global care uh, all along uh, the um, a treatment and the, the uh, care of the patient. So that's important to avoid having, on the one side, a curative approach, palliative approach, supportive approach. Uh, this should come together, these three uh, dimensions, when uh, caring for a cancer patient. So coordination, organizing uh, care, and cancer toxicity management, which enables you to have a better approach. Uh, now a little uh, a little look uh, and a tribute to this uh, lovely team now what you what is expecting you uh, in the months to come uh, well in the, in the year to come October 2006 2016 now uh, a little uh, a tribute to all the uh, concerns and problems we had uh, uh, terrorist attacks, uh, uh, someone breaking her, her leg, and and all that you heard. Uh, thank you to all of you. Thank you for turning up. Thank you, Sonia, for your work. Uh, let's see you uh, again next year uh, here. Thank you very much.